Hey there, my name's Curtis Lucas, and you're watching Empire Building. So, after today's bloodbath, I'm sure many of you are wondering what the hell is going on here. And you may be surprised to learn that all this was caused by one single $21 Bitcoin transaction. That's right, a $21 Bitcoin transaction wiped out $264 billion dollars from the Brado cryptocurrency market cap. No one ever accused cryptocurrency of being boring. How could this have possibly happened? Well, it all started earlier this morning on January 20th. BitMEX Research, which is a service that provides tools to merchants to help them verify confirmations on the transactions that they accept for the services and products that they provide to their customers who pay in Bitcoin. They monitor the blockchain for certain irregularities. Now, fair warning, what I'm about to discuss here gets quite technical, but I'm going to do my best to try to simplify it as best I can. But just know that even a lot of these things are above my level of understanding. But I certainly understand it well enough to be able to explain exactly what happened, why it happened, and what this means for us going forward. This will also give me another opportunity to further explain exactly how mining works and how important mining is to Bitcoin. After BitMEX posted that tweet, it was immediately picked up by Cointelegraph, which is a cryptocurrency publication. The article was titled, Bitcoin Double Spend Spotted in the Wild. BitMEX Research has identified a suspected double spend transaction valued at roughly $21. And it doesn't appear to be an instance of that popular replaced by fee wallet hack. On January 20th, BitMEX Fork Monitor noted that multiple blocks were produced at height 666833, BitMEX Research tweeted. One hour later, BitMEX Research attributed the orphaned block to an RBF transaction. So just to clarify, an RBF transaction is a replace by fee transaction. This is a tool used within Bitcoin wallets when you've attempted to make a transaction and the fee might be a little too low for miners to pick up that transaction and it's sitting waiting in the mean pool. This is just like we discussed in the video where we were talking about the digital currency miners of North America that Mara has started in which they'd be excluding transactions from wallets or addresses that are known to be connected to terrorist or criminal activities. So any particular transaction that might be having a hard time getting through because the fees on the network are particularly high at that particular moment, this wallet hack, as they're calling it, is simply a tool that allows you to increase the fee associated with your transaction to help it go through. But then they later say that that, in fact, wasn't what was happening. So let's move on. Twitter user and BSV's Australian advocate, Eli Afram, noted the mixed messages from BitMEX research asserting the double spent transaction should be cause for concern despite its small value. So it appears an actual double spend has occurred on BTC, not an RBF replaced by fee, but an actual double spend a mere 22 US dollars, but this could have been 22 million dollars. So this is where people started to freak out. What this article is suggesting, by including the comments from Mr. Afram, who by the way, as it mentions, is an advocate of Bitcoin Satoshi's vision, an altcoin that is the joke of all altcoins. Just for a quick backstory, Satoshi's vision was created by none other than Craig Wright. This is a man who has publicly declared that he himself is the one and only Satoshi Nakamoto. And this claim has been knocked down time and time and time again. But he persists in claiming that he is the creator of Bitcoin. I'm not going to get into all the reasons why he's been proven to be a liar. But this has even been shot down in multiple court cases. So it's not surprising to find out that a supporter of that project may want to throw some shade at Bitcoin itself by falsely claiming that there was a double spend that occurred. 
So before I go any further into this, I need to explain exactly what a double spend is and define the context in which it's being used in this case. In cryptocurrency, a double spend is where you conduct a transaction with one person, sending them, let's just say, one Bitcoin. But at the same time, you send a transaction to a second party, also for one Bitcoin, from the same wallet that only contains one Bitcoin. This was the incredible problem that Bitcoin was the first to solve. In the digital world, if you're using digital money, you have to make sure that when you're making a payment and spending money, that there's no possible way you could spend the exact same money a second time. That would render the entire system useless. And as a result, you would have increased the supply of Bitcoin on the network by sending the same Bitcoin to two separate people. So you can imagine if this had actually happened, it would completely devastate and cripple the Bitcoin network. In effect, proving it's worthless because it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. But that is simply not what happened today. There was no double spend. What there was, was two transactions of the same amount from the same wallet. And they got picked up by two separate miners who mined a block at approximately the exact same time. But here's the beauty of Bitcoin. Satoshi Nakamoto, the real Satoshi Nakamoto, planned for this. It's written in his original white paper, right here, on page three. Now, I'm actually going to read the short section where Satoshi Nakamoto himself, in his own words, describes exactly what happens in this scenario. Section five, titled Network. The steps to run the network are as follows. One, new transactions are broadcast to all nodes. Two, each node collects new transactions into a block. Three, each node works on finding a difficult proof of work for its block. Those are the miners. When a node finds a proof of work, it broadcasts the block to all nodes. Nodes accept the block only if all transactions in it are valid and not already spent. Six, nodes express their acceptance of the block by working on creating the next block in the chain using the hash of the accepted block as the previous hash. So that outlines the normal process where after a block is mined, it gets broadcast to the entire network. The network quickly verifies that that is correct and then works to begin on hashing or mining the next block using the previous block as what they call the parent block. But what happens if two miners successfully mine the block at approximately the same time and broadcast it out to the network simultaneously? How does the network know which block is the valid one? And that's what he gets into next. Nodes always consider the longest chain to be the correct one and will keep working on extending it. If two nodes broadcast different versions of the next block simultaneously, some nodes may receive one or the other first. In that case, they work on the first one they received, but save the other branch in case it becomes longer. The tie will be broken when the next proof of work is found and one branch becomes longer. The nodes that were working on the other branch will then switch to the longer one. And this is exactly what happened today. There was no double spend. There were two separate transactions of identical amounts sent from the same address, one with a higher fee than the other. One of the transactions happened to get picked up by one miner and included in the block that they successfully mined, and the other transaction was picked up by the other miner that included it in the block that it successfully mined. And each miner broadcasted their block to the nodes in their immediate network. And those blocks propagate throughout the network as each node receives it and broadcasts it out to the next branch. Sooner or later, every node will receive the message of both blocks. And then they do exactly as they were programmed to do, as exactly as Satoshi Nakamoto anticipated. They simply accept 
the first block they received and they used the hash from that block to begin working on the next block. But they save the second block that they received just in case. And everyone in the network does this. They simply accept the first one they receive and immediately go to work on solving the next one. Once the next block is mined and all transactions are included in that, whichever block formed the longer chain will become the valid block. And the transaction that was being held will be orphaned, meaning all the transactions that were contained in that block and were not already contained in the block that was eventually accepted will go back into the mean pool to be contained in yet another future block. Now I realize this does sound a little bit confusing. So it's very understandable how so many people today got it wrong. The funny thing is what happened today isn't even that rare of an occurrence. It happens roughly every two weeks or so. And as you can see from Satoshi's white paper, it was very much predicted. But the failure that occurred today was not on the Bitcoin network. The failure that occurred today was the result of just bad reporting. I spent a great deal of time poring over article after article and all over Twitter trying to get to the bottom of exactly what went down and the sequence of events that led to this pointless crash. But the good news is, once I got to the bottom of it, I realized there's no fire here. There's not even any smoke. This was nothing more than a rumor of a complete and total nothing burger. As I've said many times before, I am a huge follower of Andreas Antonopoulos, and this man was hard at work today trying to educate people on Twitter. But unfortunately, his reach only goes so far. He even spent nearly an hour and a half on a live stream trying to explain everything that went down today and answer everyone's questions. And I did sit through the entire thing because I wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything that I was missing before I brought it to all of you. Unfortunately, this won't be the last time something like this occurs. There's a couple moments from Andreas Antonopoulos' live stream, which I will leave a link down to in the description, but I wanted to make sure I highlighted a couple of these. If you do end up watching the live stream in its entirety for yourself, you'll see that he wasn't exactly well prepared to do this live stream. He spent a lot of time digging for resources to explain what had gone on, and he, had, and he was experiencing all kinds of technical difficulties. But all that considered, it's still well worth the listen to, but I'm gonna draw your attention to this part. Welcome to this live stream about the incredible Illuminati whale plot to destroy Bitcoin by breaking the consensus algorithm and double spending all of the Bitcoin in one go. Okay, not really. None of that happened. None of that happened. Um, so let's talk about what did happen and I'm going to try I'm going to try and explain this in terms that everybody can understand. So let's start with the first question that is on everybody's mind. This was normal algorithm behavior, but what does that mean? Some of the headlines you may have seen say a double spend happened on Bitcoin. All right. No, it didn't. A double spend did not happen on Bitcoin. And the reason a double spend did not happen on Bitcoin is because the Bitcoin consensus algorithm, its only purpose, oh, okay, its primary purpose is to coordinate in a decentralized fashion so as to ensure that double spend cannot happen. And finally, what happened today and whether that was in any way different? The simple answer is nothing happened today. Okay, something did happen today. Some irresponsible, poorly sourced and researched journalism happened at one of the very volatile moments in a bull market where there's a lot of new people who do not yet understand the technical fundamentals and as a result got scared. Now, this is a simple case of information asymmetry. What that means is those who understand how the Bitcoin blockchain works and understood what this was quickly, could then look at the market reacting in a panic 
and say, hmm, this is a nice opportunity to exploit information asymmetry for profit. And a lot of people who didn't understand how the Bitcoin blockchain works panicked. Some of them respectable journalists or I wouldn't say respect, respected journalists um, who accidentally um, promoted information that was incorrect and that information spread really quite broadly. In fact, some of that information ended up hitting mainstream financial publications, including uh, various information services such as Reuters and Bloomberg, etc. So now it seems even as I'm finishing recording this, Bitcoin has recovered quite substantially, rising to about $31,700 as I'm saying this. Honestly, part of me was hoping that this might continue for just a little bit longer to help me open yet another options trade. I did happen to nail one this morning that I'm quite proud about, but this video has already gone on long enough. I'll save that for another one. But the important part here is that what we witnessed today was completely artificial and these will happen again, but it did do us a huge favor. It shook out a lot of weak hands and gave people with the knowledge of what was actually going on an opportunity to take advantage of this situation. So weak hands have been replaced with strong ones. And that's how you get trend reversals. Now I'm not saying that it's all blue skies from here, but if any of you were in any doubt that somehow Bitcoin has finally come to its end, the fact is Bitcoin behaved today exactly as it was designed to do over 12 years ago when it had a network of one Satoshi Nakamoto. So while I know this was a pretty scary day and if any of you were even like me and you had that pit in your stomach when you were watching what was going on, it didn't feel very good. You might have even skipped your breakfast like I did although I usually do skip my breakfast. This feeling is perfectly natural. And yes, obviously, if I had been a little bit more patient, I certainly would have been able to benefit far more than I did. But for me, the reality is, the more I understand this technology, the more I've researched it, the more I've understood how it functions, this knowledge has given me the ability to stand in the face of these red walls pouring down on us, to stand there while everyone else is panicking, to be able to have the conviction to place that buy order without fear. Bitcoin has been through far more than you can possibly imagine, and none of it has been able to take it down after all this time. Did these people really think that a $21 transaction was going to be its demise? It's almost laughable when you think about it in those terms. But this is the world we live in. Educate yourself so that the next time this happens, you'll know exactly what to do. That's all for this one. Now let's get back to empire building. Bye.